For a multitude of years during the Mike Zimmer regime, the Minnesota Fighting Vikings arguably had the best off-ball linebacking duo in the league in Anthony DeBar and Eric Hendricks. Two off-seasons ago, Anthony DeBar left, joined the Dallas Cowboys, and this off-season, Eric Hendricks was let go and signed with the Chargers. So, ye gone, and now the Vikings, at off-ball linebacker, they, they got some openings. They got some question marks, uh, but also in this power vacuum, there's a bunch of massive opportunities as well. And throughout Brian Flores' career, uh, his middle linebackers at middle of the field have played a vital role to his defenses. In uh, New England, it was Brian, it was uh, Kyle Van Noy. Uh, in Miami, it was Jerome Baker, who really ascended, become, became a borderline Pro Bowl player. So uh, it, it's really important to get some functionality and production uh, from that off-ball linebacker position. Uh, because that does bridge the gap. It allows edge rushers to be edge rushers. It stops the run in the middle of the park, and uh, it frees up your safeties to do uh, over-the-top things, as uh, Brian Flores does enjoy uh, deploying multiple safeties. Uh, but if you can't hold it down in the middle of the field, it really is all for naught. So someone's got to step up. And fortunately, the Vikings, they have a nice mix of the veteran Jordan Hicks as well as a lot of young up-and-coming guys like Brian Asuma uh, and Ivan Pace Jr., etc. So even though it's a problem on paper and yes um, there, there are a lot of question marks going in I kind of feel okay uh, because it's going to allow some of these young guys to step up and even though I love Eric Hendricks forever he, he was losing a step he was on the wrong side of 30 so I understand why the Vikings did move on and now you have a chance to get younger faster uh, and cheaper on that side of the ball and then we'll go from there but Here's the Vikings linebacker depth right now where you know, Jordan Hicks restructured his deal, uh, took a little bit less to stay in purple, and I respect that. I think that he does have a chance to be a team captain this year. I think that it's likely that he'll wear the green dot you know, sideline communicator with Flores. Uh, did have 129 tackles last year. but So he's sort of a paint-by-number, old-school, meat-and-potatoes, off-ball linebacker. You know, the pride of Texas, hook him. He's great against a run, still very solid, a uh, good leader as well, but... In coverage, he is a liability, and you could very easily tell that towards the end of last year, uh, teams were scheming and devising ways to get 5-8 uh, in pass uh, coverage, where he had a 119.1 quarterback rating when thrown at, four touchdowns surrendered in coverage. It just wasn't good at all. So it, it is a spot where if he's on the field, uh, he could be targeted in the passing game. Uh, Brian Asuma. So Asuma is a little bit of the uh, the inverse, where Asuma is more of a modern linebacker. He's uh, he's young, he's fast, he's a little bit undersized, but he's got that speed, he's got enthusiasm. Uh, when he was given a chance to be on the field last year in the Donishell defense, he made some plays, notably against the Giants in the first game. But you know, can he hold up against the run? That is the question. But I, I think that... I think Asuma is going to be a stud uh, on this defense. I, I firmly believe that. I think that he'll add some good size. Uh, I think that he'll shore up against a run. I think Flores will deploy him in a way where he won't be exposed constantly. And I think that he'll just uh, fly around and make plays. Really excited about him. Uh, Troy Dye, I like. Uh, he's in a contract year. Been more of a special teamer throughout his career with the Vikings. Now, you know, he came in as a mid-round pick coming out of Oregon. And he was actually given opportunities to start as the you know the third linebacker, the weak side linebacker when the Vikings played a 4-3 with Kendricks and Barr, obviously, the other two off-balls. But you know, uh, in 2020, maybe it's just because he was a rookie. He wasn't really great, uh, but he has been a really solid special teamer over the last couple of years. But is that his ceiling? I guess we'll find out. Uh, Will and Quenku is a guy that I like a lot coming out of Temple. Uh, just a rock-solid meat potatoes off-ball linebacker. UDFA in 2022 uh, was on the practice squad. It was called up to the 53 at the end of last season. Uh, so I, I think that even though Ivan Pace Jr. gets a, a, a lot of the hype, I mean, could it be Quenku and Asuma going forward? It's possible. Uh, Troy Reader, who they signed formerly of the Chargers and the Rams. You know, Kevin O'Connell knows him. Wes Phillips knows him. Uh, he was an average starter uh, with the Rams, but did uh, hoist that Jerome Barty with Los Angeles. Uh, then last year, bounced to the Chargers. Uh, Brand Staley, of course, uh, very familiar with the Rams. And Troy Reader, mainly playing some special teams last year. So, I don't know, like... He's, he's a bit of a question mark for me. Like, uh, would you keep him as a solid veteran guy over the likes of Pace or Beauplan or Huber, uh, where are more uh, young, uh, young potential dart throws? Don't know. But you know, Pace is coming in with all the hype, and rightfully so. Uh, I think that he has a chance to. 
I think he really has a chance to ascend because uh, I think that there's huge opportunities uh, in this room where he's unanimous All-American, uh, formerly of University of uh, Miami, Ohio, transferred to Cincinnati last year, did great things for Luke Fickle and the Bearcats. Uh, he's uh, He's got a great nose for the football. Uh, he's great at rushing the passer as well. He do, does just wreak havoc. And you know the way that Flores likes deploying his off-ball linebackers is that, hey, you're just you're gonna blitz too. You're gonna get after the quarterback, as evidenced by you know Van Noy and Jerome Baker. So, I, I think that pace you know, fits in with what Flores likes at an off-ball linebacker. But you know, just like Asuma, you know, does, doesn't check all the boxes and measurables wise. But I mean, I think the Vikings got an absolute steal with him as a UDFA, and they got Abraham Boplan. So, uh, pace is getting all the hype, but Boplan and Huber are really interesting as well. So Bo Plan, uh, 6'2", the pride of Marshall, freaky athlete, great coverage skills. I think that he has a chance to make some noise. And also Wilson Huber. So Huber was teammates with Pace Jr. at Cincinnati, uh, has only been playing linebacker for three seasons, used to be a tight end. But he's 6'5", he's 240, 54 tackles last year. I mean, he's a special teamer dream. I mean, because that's generally what you like for most special teams units is you, you like tight ends and you like linebackers. And Wilson Huber uh, is both. So I think that Huber has a chance to fly under the radar, maybe on the practice squad, maybe a couple of game day call-ups, et cetera. But, I mean, there are a lot of question marks here. But you, you kind of have to sleep in the bed that you made, right? So I, I think it's more they were down with Hicks. They're, they have all the confidence in the world in Asama. They like Quenku a lot, and they didn't spend a, dr- a single draft pick at off-ball linebacker. They didn't have a ton of draft picks to begin with. But you bring in Pace, Boplan, and Huber yeah, as uh, Pace uh, as well as a priority UDFA shows that they want to hammer down. So you know they got Pace, huge production, and also Boplan and Huber, uh, nice freaky athletes. Uh, but also if you look at the free agent market, I mean it's not great right now. Uh, even though you do have some names out there like Deion Jones, Quan Alexander, uh, John Bostic is out there, uh, Peanut Carter. I, I, I always liked coming out of Maryland, but it. it I mean, maybe it would make some sense. So you do have Miles Jack, you know, the pride of UCLA, uh, who had some crossover Flores last year in Pittsburgh, as well as Kyle Van Noy, like we've mentioned a, a lot, uh, had a lot of crossover with him uh, in New England, as well as a, a hot second in Miami. And I, I think that bringing in a, another veteran linebacker, since you do have the roster space, you obviously have the cap space on a you know minimal nothing guaranteed deal, uh, just to make sure that you're checking all the boxes. And even though you do have a lot of questions, you do have a lot of potential. I mean, would having another veteran in there make some sense? I mean, it's possible. And also, frankly, uh, even though you know they brought in Troy Reader for a reason, I would prefer Miles Jack. I would prefer Kyle Van Noy uh, versus Troy Reader at, at this point. But uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Either way. Huge opportunity for some of these young guys. Uh, I do think guys like Asuma, Quenku, uh, Pace Jr. are really going to rise up and impress uh, this year. But uh, your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Vikings have an off-ball linebacker problem, but also that could be an opportunity uh, for a couple of these young guys. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.